Hi, I'm Gord. I'm the designer of board games like Santorini and math puzzles like you'll find in this video series. It's sponsored by MCATA, Math Council, Alberta Teachers Association. Today, we get to plunge into a mini mathematical universe. Many mathematical universes are there to give your students practice with inductive problem solving. Here are the first 25 locations in this mini mathematical universe. You can see that some of them were impossible to visit and others, the shapes attached to them. I want you to come up with hypotheses about why those shapes are there. What, what, are, what are some observations you make about those different shapes? Now we're going to go ahead with, to the number 50. Slow down at any time. Stop the video. If you think that you can predict if the next number is going to be impossible. If you predicted those two impossible numbers, you are well on your way to understanding this puzzle perfectly. <laughs> Here is the same list of uh, just the numbers associated with each of these locations. Do you see any patterns? After we get to 75, I'm going to be revealing some of these ideas, some of these hypotheses that actually work. Again, if you can predict when the next impossible number occurs. Okay, so let's uh, take a step back. Let's look at all of your hypotheses. What have you discovered? I'm not going to give away all of the clues here, but hopefully you've discovered that in each case, the number of small squares equals the, num the big number. So 76, are there 76 squares here? Yes, there are. Yes, there are. So that should have been a hypothesis. It's a basic hypothesis, but it's a hypothesis that uh, your students should have made. Okay, tell me about uh, anything else that you observed. Hopefully, you observed that the big blue square, the dark blue one, is always a square, and you would be right. In every example so far, and every example in the future, that is going to be a square. That's part of the rules. That dark blue square has to be a square. So in this case, it's an eight by eight square, and that would be 64 little squares. And then we're adding 12 to get to 76. What about the rules of the light blue square? So I'm not going to tell you, maybe, I'll, maybe we'll go on to 100, and then I'll tell you a little bit about the light blue square. Again, if you can predict when the next impossible number is, that would be impressive. <laughs> would be particularly impressive because it doesn't appear before 100. <laughs> okay, so uh, here we have um, 100. And what do we notice about the smaller in fact, 100 is not the best example. So let, let's go on to 101. The light blue rectangle is never higher than the square to its left. Its breadth 
is always less than or equal to its height. Now you've got basically all of the rules. There's one other rule that you need in order to be sure that you have the right solution in, in, in each case. And that is that you are always trying to make the big blue square as small as possible. If, uh, if possible, make it really, really small. But of course you can't make it too small because we know that that rectangle uh, has to be shorter and its breadth has to be uh, shorter than its height. So we can't make that dark blue square too small, but we want to, okay? If there's a tie, we want to choose that dark blue square as small as possible. Secondly, we want to make that rectangle its height. If there's a tie between two rectangles, we want the rectangle that makes the height as short as, uh, as possible. That's all the rules now. You can go ahead and we will go ahead now and explore some, some more. We'll go up to 128. There is actually one more, I, I've discovered one more location and it's on the way to 128. So if you wanted to take a break now and find that last un, the place that you cannot visit, it's impossible to visit. If you want to find that, go, go and go and figure that out right now before I show you. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead. There it is, 119. Impossible. And that was the last one that I find. Why do I find this universe so beautiful? First and foremost, it's because I have no clue. Are there an infinite number of those places that cannot be visited? That's my hunch. Or are there a finite number of those places? I find that sequence beautiful. 